Welcome back to another bi-weekly vlog of life in Johannesburg, South Africa. It's Jasmine, aka Jazzy Jet Sets, and you know that I am bringing you all things about living in South Africa, um, traveling throughout the world, identity discussions, and just about everything in between that I can think of. So please, 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 let's get into this vlog. It's a long one, and it's packed with so many different kinds of things. I'm talking like saying farewell to friends who are moving to Europe, going to weddings, thinking about content creation, of course, living at the gym because basically that's all I do. JK, y'all know I'd be outside. <laughs> anyway, we are starting off at the gym. It's a Friday and our trainer was not available this day. First of all, how dare you not be available for me when I need you? But second of all, he had the audacity to tell me that I should still go to the gym even though he's not working out with me. And I just feel like, that's crazy. Like, why would I be in there if I'm not going to be in there with you? Like, what? So apparently he believes that I should be able to work out on my own. And so I tried to do it. This is probably only my second time doing that since I've been working with him. And quite frankly, I don't like it. I don't really like going to the gym on my own because even though I've been training with my trainer for over one year, the machines still intimidate me. So I feel like number one, if you handle them incorrectly or the wrong way, you could really injure yourself. And then also it's just like the Capricorn in me that's like, I'm not trying to look dumb. I'm in the gym and I'm doing something wrong. Like, hello, I don't need people seeing me like, girl, what is she doing? But anyway, let's move on because I actually got my ass in the gym and had my own session. It went totally fine. I was like worried about nothing. Plus, you know, I told y'all they be up in my gym. So sometimes, you know, if I don't know what I'm doing, I could just play dance with Linda Stress. Like, oh my God, excuse me. Can you help me with this? Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> it doesn't always work, but I'm just saying, you you get those types of opportunities whenever you're not with a trainer. And for me, that's very rare. <laughs> So after the gym, I went to do my favorite thing to do, which is get my nails done. So I went to Soho Nails in Santon. I'm back here with my girl, Evelyn. Do you see these hands? Y'all don't see these hands, okay, baby? When I tell you my hands make me look like a completely different person, and so that's why getting my nails done always brings me so much joy. Like, I am a tomboy at heart. I'm a rough gal, okay? So I need nails. They really just, like, take my hands to the next level. Also, just want to say that in my adult years, or at least in the last, like, couple of years, a lot of men have been complimenting my hands, but they don't compliment them if my nails are not done. And the funny thing is like, they don't see my nails and go, oh, hey, I like your nails. My nails will be done. And then they'll say, man, you have nice hands. And I always kind of feel like, first of all, um, thank you. I don't believe you, but thank you. And then second of all, I'm just like, is this sexual? Because it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. Out of control. But if you actually like look at my nails, like, Evelyn did a great job, which she always does. Of course, I went in there with like six Pinterest pictures and then I pulled like designs from two pictures and then I'm like, put it on this nail and put that on that nail. And I feel like, you know, she always laughs at me because she's like, you always come in here acting like you want something simple and you know damn well. But this time it was pretty simple. We got something simple on two nails and I just really needed like a fresh set and she did everything that needed to be done. I left feeling so cute. I felt like a brand new woman. Like, look at these nails, guys. Like, please, you couldn't tell me nothing whenever I walked out of there. And I know I hyped it up and it's very simple, but loved it. And it's neutral is exactly what I need. It's not for any special occasion, but you just know like, okay, these look cute and we can live our lives. So I've been sharing some of the journey of working with a friend of mine who is opening his shop in Four Ways, which is the like grocer and coffee shop. 
and like I have been telling you it has been coming along so crazy watching it be built from scratch has been crazy as well I've been helping with some of the decor so here is us at Mr. Price we are just choosing like some of the coffee mugs that we want to have branded we're getting some things together for like the bathrooms that are inside of the shop making sure that we're like well equipped with everything that we need of course a couple of aprons for the employees that he'll be hiring soon and I've just been really loving being a part of this whole process. It's been like so cool. So this weekend is actually the grand opening. It's over the course of two days. And basically it is just really to get the word out about Yakoyo and the coffee shop. And yeah, very exciting stuff. So we start out on Saturday and we are there maybe around like 9 a.m. Still like tidying up a bit. And just basically the idea is friends and family and people will just kind of come to the shop check it out for a little bit and just kind of come and go in waves we made sure that we got the um bold branding on the cups we really love that the coffee shop is called bold coffee lounge which is basically um ali's brand which is really really cool and in addition of course to coffee we had to make sure that there was drinks for everyone and you know you got to make sure that you have all the vibes right for the people that you're going to be entertaining and so like i said tons of drinks we had a little bartender on hand on deck and we made sure that everyone got an opportunity to taste some of the coffee we also had the chef as well which was great so we also got to taste some of her food which the food will be traditional nigerian food but also things like shawarma puff puff things like that um so i left the opening on saturday a little bit early because i had a dinner with the girls i hadn't had a girls night in a while so we ended up going to modern tailors which is located in rosebank this was my first time here and it's indian food i love indian food i basically love food from all cultures <laughs> so i'm always ready to indulge and this place was really cute like the decor was cute of course the company was a vibe um the drinks were really good and the actual food itself was very good so we give a modern tailors a eight out of ten if you want indian food you should definitely go there i was the last one waiting for my uber so i stopped at la parada and had a shot on my way out it was really popping that day so i just thought i would pop in you know what i mean and then sunday came and it was time for the second day of the grand opening which was very very fun this was the day where most of his friends came by and I got to meet like so many different new people from South Africa but also from Zim from Nigeria just like all over and when I tell you as you would imagine it got very loud we all were just getting acquainted with each other talking a lot of smack <laughs> debating about a lot of things culture stuff pop stuff literally everything that you could think of i had such a great time and i just really love meeting people from like around the world in south africa so it was a vibe of course after we were done with the grand opening i forced ali i'm like we have to go out and celebrate so of course we went to booth I actually hadn't been to the club, proper club, in a while, and I don't know, I always love Booth. I feel like the music is always a hit, and you're always going to have fun on a Sunday night. This whole process has really reminded me how important it is to tell your friends that you're proud of them. It's something I need, but I need to remember there's something that others need to hear as well. Of course, I got home pretty late. I did not make it to the gym, and so I did make it to the grocery store, and I had the opportunity to refuel myself. I knew that I needed to savor this day off because I knew that Tuesday was gonna be a little bit crazy because I canceled. And so here we are, it is Tuesday, we are heading to the gym and I'm walking like this because I'm a little bit nervous, there he is. We are walking a lot and I'm like, what are you doing? Where are we going? Like, what is going on? Anytime you see me walking in this direction and I keep going, that means we're going to the stairs. And as you would imagine, I, I was demolished here, so I'll be quiet and just let you see for yourself.
Now let's get into what I did after this session. I actually decided to go and check out an apartment at an appointment after my gym session. This is in the Sandown Santon area. And this unit that I'm showing right now is 9,500 Rand per month, which is almost $500 in USD. And this is actually pretty cheap for this area. And as you can see, why? Like if you look at the bars that are on the windows, if you just look at the floors, if you look at just like the quality of the closets, the doors, the handles, things like that, you can tell that it's like one of the older units. The bathrooms look pretty decent, but you can just tell like why it's so cheap. And I kind of feel like sometimes it's worth it to get those places because number one, they're usually bigger. Um, and usually, like I said, they're cheaper and you're still in like a really cool place. Like I thought this balcony was fantastic, especially for me who is a yoga girl and I want to be able to do it on the days whenever I'm not going to the gym. So then the person who was showing me the place told me, you know, we also have another unit. Let's walk across the property and I'll show you that one. That unit is actually furnished and it is, I think, 11.5K or 12K because of the furnish furnishings inside. And I have my own furniture, so I'm not really interested in that. But I think I might have mentioned before in a previous vlog, when you're renting an apartment in South Africa, typically it does not come with appliances. Like in the U.S., you would get a refrigerator. You're probably going to get a washer and dryer in there. Um, I mean, if you find like a good one, a dishwasher will be in there. But most of the places in South Africa don't come with that. And I am trying to avoid have to, having to buy a washer and a fridge. So that's what I'm looking for. So those are like semi-furnished places. So this woman, her husband owned both of these units and she was like, oh, well, if you're looking for something a little more furnished, let me show you the other one. As you can see, it's furnished. Someone lives here now. It's a dude. And I definitely wanted to check it out. It's the same size as the other one, which I didn't realize. Um, but the price, I believe, is 11.5K or 12K, which I think is more like near 600 or 650 US dollars and it's a little bit different so for instance I feel like the balcony is way bigger the room has like kind of like a little sunlight room that the previous person basically made their workspace slash area and it has like an extra bed there so I really like that especially for someone who is like on the go I'm always working from home doing like entrepreneurial stuff so I really really appreciated that but again for me I just kind of feel like I want something a little more up to date something a little more modern the kitchen I didn't show that part which I totally forgot but they're actually quite nice um in both of the apartments it's just that the living room and stuff it just looks a bit old for me so this wasn't my favorite then we went to do a little more shopping for Yakoyo. um we wanted to get some like lighting and signage so we stopped here and then it is thursday march 7th and apparently the first thursday of every month at the gym they do like an evening themed celebration and that's how you know i go to the gym and then i take my ass home because i literally did not know that this entire time that i've been going to this gym i'm asking everybody like what's these decorations for and they're like yeah like in the evening everybody works out and then we have like a little celebration so we drink we have shots we do this we party and i'm like what so y'all be coming to the gym for fun that's crazy because as you can see here that's not my testimony that's not my life okay i barely made it out of here but we move and i feel like my legs are really going through it in the gym like they're really getting stronger which is great like I feel like I've always had pretty strong legs apparently it's for my dad but you know Elijah has really been focused there <laughs> and I ain't mad at him my legs might be mad at him but I ain't mad at him so we're finishing up the gym and realizing that this full weekend is about to be hectic even starting today which is Thursday so finish the gym then it was time to do some more shopping for Yakoyo and the store and the bold brand so we first ended up going to like this paper packaging shop then had to do some work at the actual shop itself get some of the more furniture made 
which here we are just testing out this coffee table that the guys just put in today. And then afterwards, we went to a couple of furniture stores to check out some chairs for the tall coffee table. I don't know. I just learned so much about what is necessary and what is required when you are trying to put together a shop for the vibes, but also a grocery store and just different things that you need. One of the very cool things that I stumbled upon is this like cannabis center, which is really cool. It's in for a way and it's basically this huge like central place for all these different cannabis shops in four ways so you know I was in heaven I was going to every shop I went upstairs and they have some places that are like specifically like CBD food or actual like flower and bud or like CBD drinks um or like bongs and stuff like that this was like a really cool um place to stumble upon so you know I'm gonna be up in there anyway I ended up hearing from a friend who we both got the same scholarship for our respective MBA programs and it was such a massive scholarship program I'm talking like thousands of people she and her husband were visiting South Africa and she randomly hit me up like girl we need to catch up okay let's go to dinner and I was like let's do it so we ended up going to Marble which is in Rosebank and this is one of those places that's like when you first move to South Africa everyone will tell you this is where you should go because it's like super fancy but the food was actually decent. Like Marble is a dope place. Now this dessert was ridiculous. This is literally just brioche bread and some ice cream in the middle and some toppings. And I just kind of felt like Marble, what were you doing there? I literally didn't even try it. It was ridiculous. Then we decided to go to opera. Um, I think they wanted a little bit of a vibe before they went in the house. And I think by this time it was maybe like 1130 ish. So we tried opera. It's right around the corner. Then it was Friday, International Women's Day. So of course, you know, my trainer kicked my ass in the name of all women. There goes that belly again. You see that? Working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, y'all. Anyway, we finished our session and I was determined to have a productive day because there was so much planned, of course. So we're having our protein. Then I'm journaling, realizing that when things get stressful for me, I stop doing the things that bring me peace and joy, which doesn't make sense. So I'm deciding to get back to it. So I made sure I did some journaling. Then I went outside and decided, you know, Jasmine, you never like walk this little path that you see when you're sitting here or you're going on the steps. So let's just like see where this path takes us. And I was pleasantly surprised. It takes me like all the way around the field so I was just having myself a good old time you know I did some breathing I was just super in awe of this little cute garden that I feel like no one even pays attention to I literally never see anyone over here and I don't know I feel like it's a lesson to like slow your ass down and pay attention to things around you you never know what you might find you know I was on my hippie vibe I'm gonna do a little flow a little stretch right here because one thing about me I can stretch anywhere I can start doing some yoga anywhere and people will be looking at me like what the hell is she doing it's like yes yes I am Then I decided to try one of those women only bolt rides. I don't know why, I just feel like it was cheap on this day. So I said, you know what? Let me see what the vibe is like on the women only cars. It was interesting because the station that the, she was listening to, it was some craziness. <laughs> Hi. 
driver was like so funny she was just going on and on about how you know women need to stop having sex with men so quickly because when they interact with other women they expect those women to have sex with them immediately so she was saying she had went out with a guy like one day and then like the next day he was like trying to get some <laughs> i was trying to be on my liberal vibe like you know but some women just like like sex so maybe that's why they do it she's like no <laughs> And then for a moment, I have forgot that I'm like in South Africa. So people here are pretty conservative sometimes. It was time to get to our errands. My usual lady who does my threading was on holiday slash vacation. So I ended up going to one of her colleagues. Didn't like it. Big mistake. That's all I'm going to say. Huge. But we got through it. And then after I was done doing my threading, I went to the market, which is every Friday and Saturday in Melrose Arch. And that is where I get the Indian food that I love, love, love to treat myself with over the weekend. It's Friday the 8th and by now we are midway through this vlog and it's about to turn up a little bit. <laughs> it's going to be a busy weekend. I'm having a fantastic Friday, which is probably due to the fact that I got a much needed apology from a man. Because you know they be wrong. Um, so yes, stay tuned for the foolery and the activities. Happy vlogging! 
So I ended up at Aronia Day Spa as a way to end the Friday on International Women's Day. It actually was not intentional, but I kind of feel like it was because where else should I end my day, right? Like this was perfect. So I actually used to come to this spa all the time when I lived in Rosebank. That's where it's located. Or it's really in Houghton, which is like right by Rosebank. But it's one of the nicer ones that's like central and it's not crazy expensive but it's still really nice so i feel like they always do a great job and the way my body was so sore from working out i really needed it and it was really good so i left a little sore but i feel like it totally did wonders now let's get into syntax so syntax is basically a speakeasy that's in rosebank and it's near barbara black sheep <laughs> and street bar called desire and I used to come here with friends. And when I tell you the quality of this place has gone down, I never really go to places that I don't like. But this place was terrible. And it turns out that they have new management. But the actual food menu was trash. The actual food itself was not good. The service that we got, not good. The drinks that we ordered not good like i would not suggest anyone to go to syntax saturday was such a fun day so i went to a farewell party a couple that i met through a friend this friend obviously they are moving to germany and they wanted all their friends to come dressed in german attire of course some people did you know i was not one of them but i had such a good time a group of us spent a lot of time talking about love is blind <laughs> After the bri slash at home celebration, everyone wanted to, well, the couple really wanted to go out with a nice little hurrah. They're actually leaving in like a week. And um, yeah, they wanted to party and be outside with their friends for one last weekend. So everyone indulged and obliged. What's funny is that I have literally not the slightest idea of what he just said in this camera. And I love that. I feel like, you know, when I'm around, everybody don't always feel so inclined to speak English to me. And they don't, it don't matter if I understand or not. And for me, that's community, people. 
that is community for some people but they might feel like no actually that's the opposite they're not including you not me i feel like if you feel comfortable enough to speak to me in your native language knowing damn well i don't even understand i'm with you we bros we're family <laughs> So breakfast is actually with some of the girlies who are in town from Abidjan, or one of them is in town from Abidjan, and she got a few of us together. This is Proud Mo Proud Mary in Rosebank. I didn't even know that they do breakfast, so I was very, very excited because Proud Mary is a really great restaurant. I feel like their food is always decent. It might be a little highly priced, but I feel like the food is decent and it's totally worth it for me. So I was very excited for breakfast, and it turned out to be amazing like it was so good and then we decided to go to this place called egg or something like that because we wanted to give our homegirls some like opportunities to get some little artisan um trinkets and takeaway stuff but when we got there it actually wasn't what we thought um but it was a new place to discover so that was fine and i feel like they had some like really it was very artsy like there was a sneaker shop in there some clothes a lot of like trendy skincare brands that i feel like you see on instagram and the girlies getting into so I anyway now let's get into i'm a piano and brunch first and foremost it rained this day secondly if you know anything about the Afrochella group, which is now Afro Future, this is a party that they throw in Ghana. I don't know if they do it in Nigeria too, but they throw it in Ghana and it's a huge hit. Mostly because you know, I'm a piano is the wave right now. Like I feel like Africans around the world and people around the world are in love with it. So it's a huge hit. Like every single person usually comes. So I was really excited. Imagine my surprise when I pulled up and it was empty it was nobody up in there nobody was there even some of the south africans that i had spoken to before i got there i asked them if they were going because i figured it was like a big deal and many of them were like no i'm not going to that no and i just was like what so yeah i was a little bit disappointed in like how the event turned out but i do believe that it was mostly because number one um it rained that day and literally it was sponsored by like the basketball africa league hennessy and afro future so i feel like it you would think that it would be like lit and it did get lit towards the end but i just feel like it wasn't as like great as you would think mind you they had major djs dj voodoo even dj maparosa was there like it was a big deal and of course this is not a complaint more so an observation of how like certain parties or events might be a hit in certain parts of the world but when you bring it to another part of the world it's just not it you really gotta understand your market anyway it is now monday i'm going to the gym and it looked like somebody was famous in the building because i'm like what was all these cars here doing and i was like totally distracting myself before getting into the gym and physical festivities and i just was reminiscing on this lovely view and we are back on the legs and the glutes baby i'll put some more music over this session as well
Okay, so you know how they say that like when uh someone does a squat and then they immediately look in the mirror like, did my butt get bigger? Not that I'm trying to see if my butt got bigger, but I'm just really trying to check out the progress, you know? So that's why I was making this video. And then there goes my tummy again. <laughs> But anyway, sometimes I just stay at the gym and I do some work there because I feel like it's easy, especially if I have stuff that I need to get to in the morning. So I was doing a little like journal um, recheck and going through my goals and some of the goals that I made at the beginning of the first quarter, like in January. And then I was trying to revamp and look back at what I wanted to accomplish so that I could see what my progress looked like and some of the things that I need to do to actually get to some of the other goals that I haven't accomplished yet given that we are in the last month of the first quarter and of course my trainer is like what are you still doing here and I'm like bro I'm trying to do some work get out of my face so then I saw this guy at the <laughs> I saw this guy who I'm pretty sure I matched with on hinge like over a year ago listen I'm always matching with somebody somewhere okay then it was time for me to get to the shop so that I could do some planning I ended up staying there for a few hours so that we could do some strategy and just get a few things on paper or should I say in notes <laughs> to prepare for the next like few weeks of the shop operations. Then I had to quickly go home because I had an interview, which was really, really cool. This interview, this is me preparing for it. <laughs> this interview was for a nonprofit called Homefront and it is a homeless families program in Trenton, New Jersey, which is where I'm from. I used to be a part of this program whenever I was a teenager, me and my younger sisters, my mom, we were a part of this program. I really haven't told you guys that much about my like life and background but yes we were a homeless family at one point and that's really what the interview was about just kind of getting into like what my experience was like as a teenager and as a child in home front being the oldest going through homelessness still you know carrying on with life and how this program really helped me and really just taking a look at where I am today and the successes that I have and the places I've been able to travel to I didn't get to start traveling until I was a junior in university or college. Now I've been to nearly 40 countries, which is something that is just like unheard of. I'm like the first in my family to do something like that. The first in my family to go to college or university and get like a master's program, an MBA. So I had a lot to like be thankful for. And I just really wanted to do this interview. And I don't know, maybe one day I will have a talk show where I actually like talk about my life. But yeah. This was really cool, so I decided to have a little nightcap with some wine. Then it was Tuesday, and I wanted to have a slow morning. I wanted to do some stretching and some yoga, and so that's what I decided to do in the garden here, and it was like the best idea. I didn't do much of it because I didn't have my yoga mat, but I figured I'm going to change that soon so that for the next week, I can actually do my yoga in between the gym. I really feel like it is helping my body, and the fact that I have not done it in months is no bueno anyway it was time for me to make some breakfast which y'all know probably from our previous vlogs i am not a cooking girl i don't cook but i can make a little breakfast here and there you know what i'm saying and quite frankly i can cook a few things it's just not something that i indulge in often to enhance my skills and i need to grow up and do it more so that's probably what I'm going to do anyway. Um, also, I just want to say that if you have not, if you're not a follower on my TikTok, um, you might not see the relevance here. But if you do follow my TikTok and you saw my 18 part story about who the F was I dating in South Africa when I first moved here, you will know that I did, in fact, date a Zulu man very early on in my South African journey. And I did, in fact, cook. That man had me in the kitchen because I thought that was my African prince and that I would be marrying him and that I had to step it up, baby. So when I tell you that man had me in the kitchen cooking, ain't been cooking since him. But I digressed. We are now at the shop and we got the signage up on the door. So it's official tissue, you know what I mean? And the coffee shop area is coming along really, really nicely, as you can see. Um, it's just a nice little vibey area to like sit in. I'm sitting at one of like the small individual tables to do some of my journaling before I get into more strategy stuff. I will just say that it has been very, very cool to see the evolution. Like I keep saying that, but I think for me, 
The reason why I keep saying it is because I don't think I've ever witnessed anyone start something from the ground up and me actually see it um, like come together bit by bit, step by step, piece by piece. So I'm just in awe, especially as someone who is stepping into their like creative journey more. Like, so seeing it being like built from the ground up, I'm just like so impressed and taken aback. And it just is, like I said before, very inspiring. Anyways, so we are just doing more behind the scenes of the shop, getting operations operating and some strategy other things that need to be done also getting a menu together this is some of the food and of course it's nigerian traditional food so putting together a menu also doing some like footage of it anyway we are back at the gym baby let me tell you something about this this form i had i was feeling like a real gym girly okay you see the front leg we're doing the dumbbells with one leg at a time. I don't even know if I'm, listen, my trainer said I was doing it good and he actually recorded me. He never records me if he feels like the exercise looks bad because he feels like it's a bad reflection on him. So the fact that he actually recorded me and said that I had good form, I was really feeling myself here. Let's talk a little bit about my content creation journey. So as many of you know, I quit my like nine to five corporate job, which was really in a nonprofit. Um, I didn't quit, I actually got laid off, but I decided not to continue pursuing a nine to five because I wanted to pursue content creation 100% of my time after I had saved up a lot of money and whatever. One of the challenges that I'm having with content creation is number one, I'm one of those people who like just jumps into things and I feel like, you know, I'll figure it out along the way. Like I'll do my research along the way, but I feel like sometimes that causes you to have a pretty, pretty difficult first start. And I'm finding that my approach to content creation was a little bit it, it wasn't the most strategic. Like I started out with, here's where I live. This is what I do. These are some of the places and cool places that I go to in South Africa. Then over time, I created my YouTube page and I said, you know what? We will share life in South Africa and travel through this platform. And then on Instagram, I will be more strategic about like, okay, I am into travel. So let me give people travel tips. Let me give people help with traveling to some of the places that I've been to in Africa. Let me help people figure out what their itinerary will look like whenever they travel to South Africa. You know what I mean? But I also was just thinking like, I actually want brand deals that are focused on skincare. I want brand deals that are focused on like home decor. I want brand deals that are like, um, you know, hair and nails like I want to work with nail shops I want to work with hair salons or mobile hair salons that need like a model so I feel like I wasn't really including all of those other things and you know in the content world everyone is like you need a niche you need to focus on one thing and I'm realizing I can't really focus on one thing because to me lifestyle is literally everything lifestyle is travel lifestyle is skincare lifestyle is hair makeup hygiene things like that lifestyle is fitness and in the gym so anyway the point is that in this content creation journey I feel like I'm continuously figuring out 
re-strategizing, honing in on what exactly I want my brand to be. And I've decided that I want it to be lifestyle, lifestyle just of me like living in another country, but still lifestyle. I want to do skincare stuff. I want to do sports stuff and athleisure. I want to do hair stuff. So I am just trying to figure out what exactly that looks like, that this part of the vlog was me filming some skincare so that this could be one of the videos to get into more of the lifestyle style content creation and so that is what I'm doing here if there are any other content creators out there anybody else who is on the content wave or you're trying to figure out the strategy about it or you have some tips and tricks or anything please put it in the comments back to the shop because obviously and today we're going to be doing like food tasting which is another thing that I like to do as far as my content I feel like people love whenever I'm doing like the traditional food tastings I've done like two or three of those videos focused on South African food. So this food tasting is going to be focused on traditional Nigerian food and I'm super excited because I've had a lot of their food but I haven't had everything. So let's get into it. I feel like I don't even really need to like voice over most of this because I'm talking throughout the entire thing and you will. But I'm left handed. Is this an... <laughs> Excuse my French. <laughs> Wait, so should I, I should put the thing on this? Yeah, so oh, okay. you dish it on the plate. Okay. But we can do... You oh, can stop it's recording. recording. No, I just wanted to get me putting my hair up. Like okay. I'm getting ready. All right. Okay. okay let's... It's finally time for me to do some Nigerian traditional food tasting. And this is brought to you by... Bring this here. Bring this here. Okay. Pound of yam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got my pound of yam because I'm obviously a professional. Oh. And I'm gonna have this with. That's a stew, that's a vegetable. Should I have it with this? Yeah, with a okay. vegetable. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, this is a for Riro. Mm -hmm. It's a vegetable soup. It actually reminds me of a Liberian dish. Um, <laughs> so I'm very excited to taste it because this is my vibe. So let's do this, baby. Okay. Slap it, slap it. Yes, well, yeah, slap it. What? <laughs> you don't be saying okay. that online? I do, but mm -hmm. I forgot. <laughs> do I need to take this out? Yeah, no, no, you caught and then, yeah. Okay, let's scoop it you with take this, it, yeah? yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, oh yeah. Mm. Mm. 10 out of 10, no notes. No notes. So, is Pandium also like foo foo? Mm hmm. Mm. Stew. Another slap. No. You can eat it with the stew, and you can <laughs> eat the stew with rice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I should try a new thing. Yeah, right? I should try a new thing. So maybe I just move this. This is rice and beans with plantain. Okay. And then this is stew with assorted meats. Got that one. Then, oh, I think I'm just gonna go for it. This is still kind of cold. Okay. I need to. Mm. Get some sauce in there. <clears throat> I 
this sauce. I feel like this is a classic. Is it? Yeah, I know this one. Good. It's good. I'm gonna give this one eight out of ten. You know, this is a classic, you know. This one nine out of ten. I love the veggies. This one, yo fara sauce, 10 out of 10. Tens across the board, no notes. And now I'm about to demolish the rest of it off of camera. Thank you, bye. So next morning, my stomach was in shambles. It was in shambles and I was supposed to be getting my hair done. And I think it was in shambles because my stomach is not used to all of the spice and the different foods that I was eating. I mean, I demolished that stuff. So yeah, I was having a bit of a rough time. But anyways, to my hair, okay? So y'all saw those cornrows. It was time for them to come out. And I finally tried Room Mobile Hair Salon. I told y'all about this in my last vlog. And I told you that I wanted to try them. And I finally got a chance to do it. They charged me 930 Rand for Fulani braids and boho hair in the back. They brought all of the materials. They brought the shampoo and conditioner. They washed my hair. They blow dried it. They greased my scalp. They brought all of the hair that I needed. They literally did everything as well pay for their own transportation it's probably a part of my cost they charged me a total of 930 rand which is the equivalent of 49 dollars in usd when i tell you it's totally worth it it's giving baby thursday night now your girl is ready to go out and we went to strictly soul Strictly Soul was a vibe per usual and I got to learn about some new DJs which I feel like every time I go to this event that's what happens. I learn about new DJs in Joburg or in SA that I had no idea about so I love that for me. And now it is Friday. Finally we made it to Friday so we're back at the gym. Okay, so Saturday is finally here, which means we are at the end of this vlog, but I could not leave out what I did on Saturday because it was so much fun, guys. I went to my first like traditional South African wedding and I realized that it's not an actual wedding, it's more of a celebration. And this couple has done a few ceremonies around the world, so I've heard, um, and it was in Pretoria. I was invited by a friend. And when I tell you, I was blown away by how dope this wedding was. The guy is from Ghana and the young lady is from South Africa. So even the like food, spread was crazy it was available throughout the entire day and night and they had like a Ghanaian traditional food area and they also had a South African food area so you know me I definitely had both <laughs> and I made my way to and from the food throughout the entire night I really loved like the decorations and the decor of their wedding 
this estate first of all was gorgeous it was gorgeous and like you you all know i'm not from sa so i don't really know but i feel like once i arrived i was like oh i'm at one of these weddings you know one of those how much is money balling balling premium or nothing okay i also did a lot of like filming some of the women's traditional clothing because there was traditional garments from like literally all over africa which was very dope um and i just like they were so beautiful so here is the couple again they are have now changed once more and they are entering again like i said i was literally just going around and asking different women if i could take pictures of their um attire obviously i'm stuffing my face as you can see there's pop there and no i'm not eating it with my hands because i'm trying to be cute and then i have some Ghanaian jollof right next to it this was my boo she looked so cute as well i was just like oh my gosh all of the like traditional clothing looks so good also had these huge musical acts at the wedding as well like they had major like famous DJs in South Africa they had like musical performances as well a lot of the t music that I heard I thought it was gospel and someone's like no it's kind of like gospel pop so I don't know I'm just gonna let it play though so you guys can hear it Okay, so quickly, number one, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this vlog. You know, I love you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And then secondly, to end this video, I wanna show y'all the South Africans doing the South African version of the electric slide. I know that's not what it's called in their culture, but the point is, it just shows you how similar our cultures are. And I would just say the major difference between this electric slide and the black American one is that you see the dip that you take before you swing your leg you do that dip here three times and on the fourth time is when you swing one dip mm. two dip mm. three dip mm. swing it around <laughs>